Hello, welcome to the Thursday, September 3rd, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In Diaries today, we got one by Xavier looking at a malicious Python script. And the main reason that Xavier sort of picked this particular Python script is to show how you can sometimes eyeball essentially a Python script and figure out that it's probably malicious. In this particular case, I guess just by looking at it, it's heavily obfuscated. But then once you de-obfuscate it, there are a number of specific Windows API calls that you wouldn't find in a normal little Python script. Like, for example, virtual alloc, which will allocate memory, which well is typically something that you don't really need in Python, other than to, like in this case, inject shellcode in to this memory. In this particular case, the shellcode just tried to connect to a particular IP address to then receive additional commands. And QNAP today released an update for many of its storage devices. QNAP has been a huge target, like many of these network attached storage devices. So certainly something that you should keep up to date. Noteworthy here are updates to pro FTP daemons. So if you have FTP enabled on the device, definitely update some of these vulnerabilities. Go back to 2000. 17 and then there are also a number of newer vulnerabilities that are being addressed with this update. While you are working on the device and uh, applying the update, I highly recommend that you disable whatever service, whatever application you don't need on these devices. They typically come with a bunch of different web applications enabled, things like PhotoStation, for example, uh, to share photos and the like. Many of them you may not need, so please disable them to reduce your attack surface somewhat. And yes, if at all possible, please do not expose these devices directly to the internet. And Apple yesterday released an update to iOS, iOS 13.7. At this point, Apple has not released any security details, so any uh, vulnerabilities that were addressed in this update, likely they're waiting and they have done this before for updates to their other operating systems, which often cover similar vulnerabilities. So they don't want to give the attackers any heads up there. I would recommend that you update this. Now, the reason that iOS uh, was updated before the other operating system is a little bit unusual, uh, but uh, I suspect it may be related to the COVID-19 exposure API, which uh, was refined and updated uh, with this update. They probably just wanted to push that out. Does not necessarily mean that there was some critical security vulnerability that they wanted to patch. And Cisco updated its Windows Jabber client. Now, in case you don't know what a Jabber client is, it's an instant messaging client. It's actually open source software that Cisco uses as part of its messaging solution. There's also a voice component to it for some of the Cisco voice over IP solutions. The problem with this vulnerability is that an attacker is able to run arbitrary software on the victim's machine just by sending a specifically crafted Jabber message. Now they cannot download any or upload any code to the victim system. They can only run what's already on the system. However, what's not really clear is if they can pass, for example, command line parameters. This again would, you know, with tools like Bits Admin that are usually installed on a Windows system, allow an attacker to then download arbitrary code and then of course execute it. So uh, not absolutely clear how well this can be exploited. Uh, first of all, of course, the attacker needs to have the ability to send the message off these solutions are sort of company internal, so external users may not be able to send messages other than maybe via some gateways. 
And of course, we often talk about vulnerabilities in routers from major manufacturers like Netgear and D-Link, but smaller manufacturers don't necessarily do better. We today have an advisory about MoFi routers. These routers are your standard sort of home user Wi-Fi router that you often find in homes and small businesses. And thanks to rich merch from Critical Start. We have a list of additional vulnerabilities in these devices, many of which do allow, for example, access via an undocumented password or remote code execution. Some of these vulnerabilities were fixed now, but some are still outstanding and have no patch as of today. So if you have one of those devices, uh, now this is something that's not easy to necessarily disconnect from the internet. After all, it's your router, but at the very least, make sure that any admin interface or such is not reachable from the internet. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.